and he is uh, the vice president uh, for solution engineering in Germany and Austria. He is uh, one of the first five employees of Salesforce in Germany, and I think that's quite outstanding. And he has been with uh, Salesforce for over 15 years now, has talked to many, many different businesses, to many different leaders. And I think he has quite a good understanding what is needed, needed for change. So uh, I think the floor is yours, uh, Bernd, and I'm really excited about your topic. And yeah, ask questions, people. Awesome. Thank you so much, Jonathan, for that kind introduction. Um, yeah, it's really, really a pleasure to be here today, to be with you. And, and, you know, first of all, thank you all very much for, you know, investing the time and, and, and listening to me this afternoon. Um, and I hope you can all see my, my presentation, my slides um, that I have prepared. Let me know if there's any technical issues, um, but I hope uh, it should be okay. So as you can see, we picked a real easy topic for this little talk on a Friday afternoon, which is uh, basically how to save the world couldn't think of anything easier than that. Uh, no, but in all seriousness, uh, what I'm going to talk to you about a little bit over the next 30 minutes or so is why we think businesses are the greatest platform for change. Why do we think that at Salesforce? And actually, how can state-of-the-art technology um, contribute to you know, saving the world? But before we dive into the content, I'm legally obliged to share this with you. I have to do that because we are a publicly traded company and I need to make you aware to make all purchase decisions around Salesforce stock or Salesforce technology only based on products that are currently available. And you can find all the details about that on our website. Okay, now that the legal um, things are done, let's move on and let's start with a little bit of background, a little bit of background about, you know, Salesforce and who we are as a company and what we stand for and what some of our perspectives are. Also, maybe a little bit about myself to set the stage for all of us. I think it's fair to say that we all currently live in pretty crazy times and also in unprecedented times. Okay, you know, we have this climate crisis and, and global warming and everything gets worse every year. Uh, we have a social justice crisis as well with a lot of racism still happening in, in many places in the world. And, and when I look at what's happening in the, in the US currently with the election, I think we also have a democracy crisis uh, and if all of that wasn't enough, we of course also have to deal with this pandemic, okay? And the pandemic, the COVID-19 crisis um, has obviously, you know, caused a big health crisis in the world, but it's also caused an economic crisis, right? Because many companies, many organizations are now suffering from the lockdowns and the other me measures that are being taken. So it's really, really not easy. And, you know, if you look at all that in, in, in in total, you, it can become pretty scary. And so I think it's it's even more important in times like these, um, you know, to have something to hold on to, something that's stable, something then that can, you know, provide a little bit of guidance. And for me and for us here at Salesforce, um, that's our core values. It's our core values that give us guidance and, 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 that, and that stay stable even in the most you know, crazy of times. And these are the four core values that we stand for here at Salesforce. Number one is trust. So deliver the most trusted infrastructure and communicate openly. Second one is customer success, right? We're obsessed with the success of our customers and the mutual growth that comes with it, the growth for our customers and also the growth for ourselves. And then innovation. We've been named the most innovative company in the world a couple of times by Forbes. And it's really, really, um, deeply embedded into our DNA. And then the fourth one is equality. That's also, that's super important here for us at Salesforce, you know, respect and value diversity of people. You know, um, no matter the background, everybody should have the same opportunity. That's really what we strongly believe in here at Salesforce. And then the other thing that we've started a couple of years ago is what you can see on that little sign in the lower right-hand corner. It's the Office of Ethical and Humane Use. So at some point we realized we probably want to make sure that customers use our products and our technology in the right ways. And what we mean by that is that we, we probably don't want customers to use it, you know, for purposes that are not aligned with our core values. And so we have a group of people uh, in place that watches over that. 
And, you know, as Jonathan th said in the beginning, I joined Salesforce already 15 years ago in 2005, and I can hardly believe it when I say it, but it's true. And I was the fourth or fifth employee here in Germany, and we're now at, what, 1,600 or so in Germany and 60,000 worldwide. So it's been a real crazy journey. And it's been a super, super successful journey. We've been successful beyond our wildest dreams here at Salesforce. Would never have believed that was possible when I joined. And so one of the reasons for that, and also one of the reasons why I still burn for this company, I, I still burn for Salesforce. I like saying that because it's really true. And one of the reasons for that is, you know, we have all this change, all this innovation and everything, but at the same time, the culture and these core values have been super stable across the entire time that I have been here and actually since the company was founded. Maybe the values were named a little bit differently when I joined 15 years ago and maybe the details were a bit different, but in essence, it was the same. And that gives us here at Salesforce a lot of stability and that's the foundation for everything we do here. And then the other thing that is also deeply, deeply embedded in our DNA here at Salesforce is our philanthropy model, our 111 model. So we all believe in, you know, do well and do good, okay? And what does it mean, the 111 model? Um, it, we, it means we, we give 1% of our time, 1% of our equity, and also 1% of our product to nonprofit organizations, okay? And to, and to initiatives and to projects, you know, that help basically make the world um, a better place. And we like to give back to the communities that we operate in, and we like to, to, to give back and to good for and with the people and the ecosystem around us. And, and, and what does it actually mean in detail? So 1% of our time, that means every employee here at Salesforce can spend up to seven full working days per year, fully paid, no need to take vacation for nonprofit organizations or to work in, in these projects and initiatives. And so over time, more than 5 million hours of volunteering work have been delivered by Salesforce employees. Then the second one, that's about the money, obviously. So not only have more than $350 million of grants been generated, but the company Salesforce matches every donation that we do as employees. So if I donate, say, $30, whatever, to some nonprofit organization, I upload the receipt to our internal system, and the company matches that, means they give another $30. Okay, and then the product. So more than 40,000 companies, nonprofit and educational organizations around the world use our products, run their organizations on our platform, and they do that for free or at a very low price. And then maybe most importantly um, is that multiplier effect that we've seen. So by now, more than 10,000 companies have started doing something similar. So we've been successful, you know, taking that message um, to the marketplace and we've inspired other companies. And there's many, many companies and organizations out there now that also have philanthropy models and that also like to give back to their communities. And that's just fantastic. So, but you know, when we start thinking about these things and when we start thinking about, well, where can I invest my time? What should I do? Where should we invest money and effort and, 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 and all that? then I think this list of sustainable development goals from the United Nations is a very good starting point. This is basically the to-do list for us as human beings. These are the 17 areas that are really, really important and that we need to improve, okay? It's like poverty, hunger, climate, education, equality, all these things. And it has been adopted by almost uh, 200 countries by now, and a lot of effort is going into this by individuals, by organizations, by all kinds of all kinds of institutions and, and companies. And Salesforce is very, very committed to these um, sustainable, uh, sustainable development goals as well. Okay, but what are some concrete examples um, of projects that have emerged from that? And I picked this one here and it's called the One Trillion Trees Initiative. And you can go to that web website, one-t.org and you can find all the details about it. It's basically about you know, making sure we plant one trillion trees over the next uh, over the next couple of years. And one trillion is a pretty big number. I think it's a, in German, it would be eine billion. I think it's a one and 12 zeros. So it's a lot of trees. Uh, but why, why is that great? I think that's obvious. Um, we all learn at school that trees are really, really cool because what they do is, um, you know, convert CO2 into oxygen. And oxygen is obviously a lot better for, for the planet than CO2. So that's why trees are really cool. And at Salesforce, we have also committed to contribute to that. And so we will um, we will grow, restore, and conserve um, 100 million 
trees over the next decade, over the next 10 years. That's our commitment. And we've already started, and there's also a website out there where you can track progress, uh, you know, where we, where we share with the public what we've already done, where we are with our goal here. So we talked a lot about the, the, the crisis in the beginning and what, you know, what a crazy time it is that we live in. But the good news is every crisis also offers opportunity. Okay, and that's also true for, for, for the pandemic, for the COVID-19 crisis that we're all in. Because it, it kind of means that at some point we will restart, we will recover, okay? Companies, uh, countries, organizations, we will all, you know, start again at some point. In some cases we already have, in some cases we will soon, in some cases we will a little, a little bit later, but sooner or later everybody will get back to work, we will recover, restart. And that's kind of like a fresh start, right? And when we have a fresh start, then why not put the climate and, 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 and a set of actions around the climate uh, at the center of that recovery? Okay, so I think that's a great idea and that's a great opportunity. And so more than 160 other companies have joined us in that initiative. And so it's now it's now a global CEO led um, advocacy effort where we try to influence governments and other institutions to make sure we don't forget about the climate um, when we start. Uh, you know, recovering in the different countries and in the different uh, areas of the world. I think that's a that's a that's a that's a real huge opportunity that we all have now that has come due to this pandemic, um, and that we should that we should not miss out on. But let's also talk a little about a little bit about what we do here at Salesforce when we don't volunteer, um, what we actually do for a living. Um, and so I don't know, you know, how many of you already know Salesforce and what it is that we do, but basically we're the number one CRM provider in the world. The CRM stands for Customer Relationship Management. Um, so what does that mean? It means, you know, we help our customers with their digital transformation and we help them put their customers in the center of everything that they do. We help our customers become customer centric, as we call it, which means we help them provide customers with the, the digital and integrated experiences that they expect today, okay? And we do that using our Salesforce Customer 360 platform that you can see right here. And that's, a, and that's basically a set of solutions across sales, service, marketing, but also commerce, analytics, integration, industry solutions, an e-learning platform that we call Trailhead. Um, and a lot more. And all of that is backed up with platform services like mobile, bots, artificial intelligence, of course, you know, uh, workflow, uh, approval processes, and things like that. And so that's, uh, that's, the, that's part of the title of my presentation today, right? Business is the greatest platform for change. And that is, that is something that our our founder, and he still is the CEO of Salesforce.com, uh, Mark Benioff, strongly believes in. Business are a great platform for change. Why is that? It's because companies have money, we have the employees, so we can spend time, we have all the assets. We actually, as companies, uh, have a great opportunity to, to do good and to make a difference. And here are a few examples of things that we've been able to do here at Salesforce over the years and that we are planning to do going forward. So in the area of equality, for example, we've donated a million dollars um, to the National Association um, uh, you know, for Colored People. So it's about the advancement of colored people. We've, done, we've given them more than a million dollars. We have doubled our representation of black employees in leadership positions in the US mainly. We have given more than a million dollars to diversity workforce groups. Um, we will spend a hundred million dollars with black owned businesses going forward. So we will purchase and buy things that we need here at Salesforce from black owned businesses going forward. We will donate $200 million to organizations advancing racial equality and justice and $100 million are to be invested by our, um, by our investment firm, Salesforce Ventures, to black and underrepresented minority founders. And then in the area of healthcare, over on the other side, we have paid for 50 million pieces of personal protection equipment, PPE. So things like masks and gloves and so on for hospitals, for example. We have donated more than $20 million to frontline organizations dealing with the implications of COVID-19. And in the area of education, we have partnered with other companies like Apple and Google 
to provide free online learning resources to enable at-home learning. So these are some of the things we've been able we've been able to do as a company. But let's now talk about technology and let's also put a bit of a focus on ethics and ethical use of technology. At the end of the day, you know, we're a technology company here at Salesforce and I would like to share a few examples of, of, of really cool pieces of technology um, right now. So the first one I'd like to talk about is what we call the sustainability cloud here at Salesforce. And the sustainability cloud is actually a solution that is meant for carbon accounting. So, so we ourselves and other companies use the sustainability cloud to track their carbon footprint, track their emissions, document their emissions, you know, um, and also share the results with the world and make sure that at the end of the day, they, they can calculate that overall CO2 footprint that the company has, you know, taking into account all the different buildings, the assets, you know, the, the vehicles, maybe the, um, the factories, the data centers, the travel activities, what have you in the different companies. Um, and that is actually always the first step on that journey to then hopefully becoming a carbon neutral company at some point, which is something that we achieved already a couple of years ago, um, unfortunately here at Salesforce. Um, and we're now trying to, to help other companies on that journey. And there's an, actually an interesting you know, story and history behind the sustainability cloud because it has emerged from our own requirements to do carbon accounting and calculate and, 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 and you know, publish and share our own carbon footprint. And when we started doing that many years ago, we did it with spreadsheets, okay, like many other companies do. And that has, you know, that has turned out to be a very cumbersome, slow, a process with lots of mistakes and not really integrated and really, really difficult. And then at some point we decided, hey, why don't we go ahead and use our customer 360 platform to build an application, a solution for this purpose. And, at the, and the platform is actually, is actually meant for that. It's meant to be able to build solutions and applications on it. And so we did, and then we ended up with the sustainability cloud, that, which is now a much, much better way and a much faster way and a much more accurate way to do our carbon accounting and also publish uh, and share the results with the world. And then we've productized it and now we've taken it to the market. And now we sell it to other companies, um, you know, that look for solutions to their, do their own carbon accounting and then hopefully also become, you know, carbon neutral at some point. And here's another example of, of a really cool piece of technology um, as far as I'm concerned. And it, it has to do with the Benny of Ocean Initiative. So that's an initiative uh, um, to actually, you know, keep keep the beaches and oceans clean and safe. And it's an initiative supported by Lynn Benioff, the wife of our CEO and founder, Mark Benioff. And what's actually happening here is, is the following. So there are drones, you know, flying over the beaches in California and these drones record video material and that video material is, is analyzed in real time using AI technologies like image recognition, computer vision, um, and, and other stuff. And what we do there is we, we actually keep track of sharks, right? We try and keep track of shark activity, you know, and when, when certain, you know, risk levels are hit, when there's too many sharks in certain areas, then the system actually automa automatically dispatches safety workers that will then go to these beaches, warn people, make sure, make sure everybody is safe. And that's something really, really cool, I believe, that can be done with modern technology, with artificial intelligence today. But as soon as we start talking about artificial intelligence, we also need to look at this, right? Because there are still many, many issues and concerns um, about artificial intelligence. So in some situations, it has led to biased decisions against minority groups. Um, it has been problematic sometimes in recruitment decisions. So when it was about who should be hired for a certain job, who's the best, who's the best candidate. Um, sometimes people, people were just were not given the same, you know, opportunity. The, the systems were biased, as I said. You know, things like facial recognition can be difficult. And so there, there's lots of lots of lots of concerns and issues actually that really need to be taken seriously, and that has actually led to many executives, you know, walking away from some of these AI solutions because of these issues. So therefore, we think it's really really important for companies, and and we have it ourselves as well, to install an ethical AI practice, right? So an instance that makes sure you know artificial intelligence is developed and used in an ethical way. 
And why is that important? Well, first of, first of all, it's important from an internal perspective because it can help create focus and direction. You know, it can guide the research and development teams. It can, it can set boundaries in terms of what can and cannot or should or should not be done. So that's important. And also from an external perspective, customers actually care about what companies do with AI and whether it's ethical or not and how they make sure it's ethical. So that's, so that's key too. And then also from a competitive perspective, it can really become uh, an important competitive differentiator because customers typically um, prefer to buy from companies that have something like that in place. And so the bottom line is here at Salesforce, we think there's five pillars that really, really are important when we think about ethical usage of technology and, and ethical usage of you know, artificial intelligence more specifically. And that's what we do ourselves and, and that's what I believe every company, every company should do. So first of all, it needs to be responsible. Okay, so we need to safeguard human rights and, and also the data that's being used needs to be protected at all times. It needs to be accountable. So constantly seek and leverage feedback, guidance, and run internal reviews. Make sure we improve over time. Make sure we play within the boundaries that we've set for ourselves and, and, and don't go beyond. It needs to be transparent. So we need to strive for model explainability, clear usage terms, and ensure customer control of their own data and models. So let's be fully transparent about everything we do in that area. And then, of course, it needs to be empowering, right? So, so generally speaking, AI should promote growth and increase employment and, and benefit society as a whole. It's a, it, it can be a good thing uh, if it's being used in the right way. And then also it needs to be inclusive, okay? It needs to respect the societal values of all those impacted, not just the ones that create the models and, and the AI technology, but also the people that it's being applied to or that it's, that it's being used by. So these are the five pillars that we respect here at Salesforce and that we think any company should respect. Okay, and as we're approaching the end of the presentation already, and I hope I'm doing well in terms of time, um, I would like to share my call to action with all of you. And it's actually a call to action, you know, for companies, for organizations, but also for us as individuals. So, so for companies and also as you, you know, think about what are the companies that you maybe want to work for at some point, you may want to pay attention to this as well. So companies should have a set of values and they should operate based on these values. And of course, these need to be good values. And when you think about companies you want, you're interested in, then make sure, you know, the, the, the values of that company match your own values. Then secondly, establish a philanthropy model. I think every company should have something like that. Maybe not to the extent that we do it, okay? But I think each and every company can contribute a little bit by putting in place a philanthropy model and by doing by doing good in the in the communities that they operate in. Become carbon neutral. I think in 2020, each and every company should have that goal. Maybe it's not going to happen overnight. Maybe it's going to be a journey. Right? Maybe some companies, first of all, need to start doing the carbon accounting. Maybe they first need to start, you know to find out what is actually the CO2 footprint that we have. Maybe that's the first step. That should always be the first step, probably. But then embark on that journey and set yourself the goal to be carbon neutral as a company at some point, okay? And then last but certainly not least, you know, ethical use of technology and AI in particular. Let's make sure we do the right things with technology. And, and so what, 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 what can you do, each and every one of you? But first of all, you can, of course, go to our website and, and search a little bit, and you can find more information about basically all the topics that we talked about um, today in the presentation. Then secondly, what I would recommend doing, you can sign up for free on our uh, you know, e-learning platform, Trailhead, trailhead.salesforce.com. It's for free. You can sign up, and you will find sessions and courses and trails, as we call them, um, again, about all the topics, almost all the topics that we that we talked about today in the presentation. Uh, and last but not least, if you're particularly interested in artificial intelligence and ethics around artificial intelligence, please go to einstein.ai slash ethics. Einstein is our internal name for our AI technology, and you can find a lot more information and detail um, about that. And let me finish the presentation with this bold statement, 
I was asked uh, to make a bold statement when I was first approached and asked, you know, to present in this in this session here today. And and the statement um, I came up with is this: At the end of the day, only people can save the world. However, people leveraging leading leading edge technologies are far more likely to succeed. Thank you very much. I think we're open for questions now. Yeah, uh, thanks so much, Bernd, uh, for this interesting uh, presentation and talk. I think uh, now many people know a bit a little bit better what Salesforce does, what they do, and uh, how they are trying to make the world a better place. And we have received some questions, and um, uh, I will just read them to you or I'll try to uh, shorten them, and then uh, hopefully you have a good answer uh, to that. So um, there's uh, one question or two questions uh, about this customer 36 or, or 360. Customer 360, yes. Yeah, 360, um, where you talked a bit about uh, sustainability, I think. And uh, Thomas asked if, if that is uh, well received by your customers, if it's really like, uh, like part of your value proposition that you have in sales meetings or, yep. yeah. That's the question. Yeah, I, th I think you refer to the sustainability cloud uh, that, I, that I mentioned in the presentation. Um, and, and yes, there, there's a huge interest in the marketplace. Sustainability is a topic uh, in, you know, in every board, in, uh, for every C-level, C for every executive, in every, in every company, it is a topic. And we make it part of each and every pitch and each and every conversation that we have with customers. Whether the customer has asked about it or not, we always make sure we position it. We always make sure we make our customers and our prospects aware that we have solutions for this that we use internally and that we also have uh, quite a few customers uh, for already. And we make it part of every conversation that we have with customers and the, and the interest is huge. It also goes a, a bit in the direction that uh, Salesforce has uh, hugely um, yeah, be, been involved in the current crisis. So for example, I think Tableau has set up a dashboard uh, concerning the coronavirus and there's this new initiative, I think it was work.com or something, yes. where they help uh, people to open up. And I think that's also kind of related to that question because it's also about making the world a, a better place. Um, are you in any way involved uh, with these uh, initiatives or have you some, some background information maybe uh, in this direction? Yes, I, yes, I was. I mean, when when this whole crisis, uh, the pandemic, I mean, when that uh, when when that uh, when that became when it, when it became clear that this would be something that we will have to deal with over a longer period of time, then of course we started thinking about uh, again technology because we're a technology company. So we started thinking about technology and solutions that we can maybe come up with to help people and companies and organizations in this crisis. Okay, and so one of the results of that, and you mentioned it already, was actually work.com which is, um, again, a solution that we've created for companies to make sure they bring their workforces back to work in a safe way, right? Because now many companies are faced with requirements like, oh, we can only use 10 or 20% of the capacity of our offices or our buildings, and we somehow need to plan shifts because we can't allow everybody to come back um, at the same time. We can only allow 20% per day, but then we want to give everybody an opportunity, and maybe there's people that you know, for whom it's more important to work from the office than for others. Others can maybe work from home, but not everybody. And there are quite a few decisions that need to be uh, need to be made. And then, and so we came up with that application, and it's a mobile application as well. And so companies uh, now now use it actually to organize how they bring their workforce back to work in a safe way. You know, making sure all the rules are obeyed. You know, not too many people, distances can be kept, and so on. Also. Um, a few uh, health, a few pieces of health information are included in that application, and then of course on the back end of it, there's like a big, a big monitor, a big dashboard for people in in, in the company to track everything and, and and make sure, you know, people return safely and 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 the distances can be kept and not too many people in one office in one location, and so on and so forth. And that's and that's just one example. Yes. Also uh, been a, a part in. Uh, in Germany, or is that more that they states what does that uh, out of the US? No, it's a. Oh, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. Uh, or is it a worldwide initiative in the end, where you, where you try to to help in the current situation? 
Yeah, it's, it's worldwide. It, it, it's available uh, everywhere in the world, not just in the US. We have uh, companies that use it here in Germany and in other places, and we ourselves use it. So when I want to go to our Frankfurt office, for example, um, which I cannot do anymore because it's going to be closed again mm. now, but it used to be open over the last couple of weeks. And so whenever I wanted to go there, I needed to use work.com to request a shift. Okay. And then at some point I would, you know, get that shift or, or maybe not get it if it was too busy already. And so we use it internally, but also customers, you know, in all areas in the world use it. It's not, it's not US specific. Mm -hmm. So um, maybe a question that also goes a bit in this direction and has been, was actually the first question. I think in, in your presentation, you talked a lot, a lot about how Salesforce um, helps the world by um, spending the time of the employees or the spending money of the yes. profits of the company. And uh, Peter asked um, if you only, only uh, in quotation marks, only use the money that you earn and the time of your customers and uh, no, customers of your employees to make the world a better place, or if you also make the world a better place with your product. And I think we had talked about uh, the work.com thing, but mm -hmm. do you have maybe other examples how your product um, is helping customers um, yes. With regards to a more sustainable world or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can. I can share a personal example with you. We talk, I talked about the one 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 model, right? The philanthropy model, which means one percent of our time, one percent of our money, and one percent of our product go to nonprofit organizations um, around the world. So I've spent. Um, I've, I've personally spent time in countries like Kenya, for example, and also Vietnam, and I've and I've been there. And I've worked with an organization that's called Kidspire. Um, you can find it at kidsbuyer.com and they they run, you know, um, they run places and orphanages in countries like Vietnam and Kenya and they work with the with the kids over there. And these companies, these nonprofit companies, they also need to run their company somehow. They also need to keep track of their staff. They need to keep track of their assets. They need, need to keep track of the donations that come in. They want to send out newsletters. They want to attract new donate uh, new uh, donors and so on and so forth. And so what they do, and Kids Buyer in Kenya, for example, does it because I've been there and I've worked with them on that. They use Salesforce to do that. They use the Customer 360 platform and they use it for free that I showed you in the presentation to run their own organization on it. So that's how they manage their own organization. That's how they manage, manage their staff. That's how they track the kids that are in the, uh, in the organization. That's how they manage the donations. That's how they send out the newsletters. They really use the Salesforce technology to do that. And we've been there, you know, I've been there twice, you know, two years ago and three years ago. I've been there for a week with a group of Salesforce people. And one of the things we did was help them set up the Salesforce solutions for them, number one. And then we trained them on how to, how to use the applications and how to develop them and, you know, maintain them and roll them out themselves going forward. Uh, what is the feedback in this direction? Are the founders of such little startups, are they really they happy it. about it? And uh, they love yes, it. Yes, <laughs> they, they love it. They love it because they, they, they get it for free or, you know, depending on the size, maybe they have to, small, they have to uh, pay a small fee, but it's heavily discounted. And it's, and it's leading edge technology, right? I mean, you know, it's, it, it's really great technology that some of the largest corporations in the world use to run their newsletters and, and obviously also other things, you know, to run their digital transformation and to, to become customer centric and all the things that I mentioned. And now all of a sudden here's Kidspire, this little, you know, but great organization and they do so much, they do so much good, but they would never have the money to afford that. Okay. And so we give it to them for free. And not only do we give them the technology for free, but we also send them people like we did two years ago that go on site and help them and help them customize it and help them and train them on it and make them understand how to best use it and how to roll it out and how to get the most benefit um, out of it. Mm -hmm. So they love it. Is that uh, also part of this 1%, 1%, 1% yes. uh, rule? Yes. Or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, 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 that you know, it, it, so the example with Kids Buyer in Vietnam and Kenya covers all three dimensions of the 111 model. First of all, Salesforce people went there using the 1% of our time, the up to seven days a year that we can spend for purposes like that. So we use that time to go there and help them, number one. Number two, we obviously also donated money, okay? And Salesforce matched the donation. So for every dollar that we donated, Salesforce added another dollar. So that's the second dimension. And then the third dimension is they also use the product. They use the Salesforce applications to run their organization. So it's a, it's a perfect example that covers all three dimensions of the 111 model. And is that, uh, so is Salesforce the only company that is doing that? Because I no. think Peter asked, uh, 
if you also change other companies and I think yes, that's quite that, interesting. Yeah, absolutely. I think I briefly mentioned it uh, when, I, when I talked about the 111 model. It's that multiplier effect. That, that is maybe the most important aspect of it, to be honest. Because we managed to inspire more than 10,000 other, not we alone, you know, it's not, it's, it's not us alone, you know, don't get me wrong. I mean, we're, we're maybe on the forefront of this and we were very early with our 111 model because it was, it started on day one when the company was founded in 1999. Okay, so we were early, but we're clearly not the only ones. But now there's more than 10,000 companies out there that have similar philanthropy models. Okay, and I think we've played a role in inspiring these companies and in, in you know creating this multiplier effect and and so yes that's absolutely that's maybe the most important aspect of it make sure we can we can take other companies also onto that journey okay uh, very very uh, cool that uh, you are not the only ones that are doing it um maybe uh, more in the direction like one of our uh, of, of of my of tech academy uh, actually asked uh, how you differentiate yourself from other competitors Uh, but before we go into that question, um, are some of your competitors or direct competitors also part of this initiative or yeah. are they not? Well, they have their own models. I mean, I think almost every company of a certain size, at least, and, and, and clearly all of our main competitors, they also they also do good. Okay, they also have have models, uh, philanthropy models like that. It's probably not the same. It's probably a little bit different here and there, but they also do this. What I'm not sure about is really, frankly, honestly, is whether it's as deeply embedded in that DNA as it is in ours. Because when you come to Salesforce, from day one, you will be you will be exposed and you will you will feel that everybody in the company, each manager, each employee um, encourages you to do this. Okay, so it's not something that we put on the website and then don't really do, right? We don't say, well, you have seven days, but please don't use them. That's not what happens. We encourage people to do, we encourage people to go beyond seven days. It is really, really part of our DNA. And when you start at Salesforce, you go to boot camp, which is you know the first week or so where you learn all the basics and everything. You will do a volunteering activity in your boot camp week. Right? And, and you know what? That was the case when I joined 15 years ago in my boot camp week. The last day was volunteering, or half the afternoon of the last day was volunteering. Okay, and that is still the case today. So when you join Salesforce today, you go to bootcamp, you will do what you will do volunteering in your bootcamp. Mm -hmm. And it's so deeply embedded in each internal meeting, in each presentation, in each all hands call. And there's always going, we will always also talk about volunteering and some cool projects and some cool things that, that some of our teams have done locally or somewhere in the world. Yeah, I guess uh, that's also a, a big differentiator to, to other companies because um, um, I, I think what Salesforce culture is a lot about is about this this team spirit that you are not alone. And I think if we, we look more at Microsoft, I, I have some friends there and they told me, okay, there's a culture more like, okay, you have to do it and, and you have to freedom to do it, but uh, you have to find your way. And I think that's uh, that's a big um, difference. Do you have maybe other, other cultural or as you mm -hmm. please uh, differences uh, from, from other big tech players? Yes. Um, so I, I, I'm being I'm being asked that question a lot, as you can imagine. So customers ask me, people ask me, well, how do you? What's different? How do you differentiate? What's what's different compared to SAP, Microsoft, Oracle, or I don't know Adobe, any other tech company? And that's obviously a tough question, right? Because you know I have a lot of respect for all these companies, a lot of respect. I mean, they're all great. They all do great things. They're all smart. They're all um, they're all really good good companies and really good places to work. I, however, burn for Salesforce, right? And I, trust me, I would have had the opportunity to go to SAP, Microsoft, or any other place over the over the this journey of 15 years, but I never did because I think this is for me. It is still the best place, okay? And and the answer to that question um, always, you know, relates back to the core values that I talked about. These four core values that we have, you know, trust, customer success, innovation, equality, match my personal values that I have as a, as a human being perfectly. And I know that Salesforce really lives these values, right? So, you know, the innovation is obviously super important for our customers because when you decide for Salesforce, when you, when, when you choose us as your partner, you know that it's not going to be right 
only f only for now, but we're going to be the best partner for you over you know over the next couple of years because we innovate. There's three versions every year of our of our product with lots of new you know features and and new new values and so on. So that so that's cool. Then equality is super important. You know everybody at Salesforce has the same opportunity. Okay. And then, and then customer success, and that's also a key, key, key component. You know, we are obsessed. That's the way I like to say it. We're obsessed with the success of our customers. We want to make our customers successful. Okay. And we make every effort to make that happen. Right. And that is, you know, that combined with the success that we have, the, the journey that we're on, the growth that we're seeing that makes Salesforce for me personally, the best place to be. And I think it's from, from, it differentiates us from many others as well. I think these are really great last words uh, for, for this session. We only have two minutes left, and I think it would be a, a, a little hurry if we would ask the last questions. But is there any uh, possibility that uh, people can reach you or one of your um, colleagues if they have any further questions? Is yes, there an email address or uh, a LinkedIn page or something? Yes, absolutely. I don't really know how we have set this up, but certainly we can we can be available for for questions. And uh, um, I don't know whether we do that via Catherine or one of the other um, colleagues that are involved here. But yes. absolutely, yes. Maybe Catherine, maybe Catherine can write something in the chat for the people that are interested in in getting to know Salesforce a little bit more or a little bit better. And I think. Um, That's it. I'm, I'm really, really happy about the session. It was really interesting. Thanks for your time. And also thanks uh, for wearing the Tech Academy t-shirt. I, I love it. Thank you very much for my t-shirt and for the app love. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you all very much. Be safe, okay? Thank you. Yeah, so um, Bye -bye. I, I think um, for the others, we have a little um, pl uh, a plan for the end. And uh, you can join, I think it's on the Bühne or the official stage. Um, see you there and i guess there's a little networking session afterwards and yeah thank you for for your attention and um, have a great day